I'm here with Phil Rothrock, who's been a uh, long-time wing innovator in our sport of land sailing. How you doing, Phil? Good. Hey. So when uh, did you start land sailing? Um, well, it, it, you could go way back to when I was a kid and uh, everybody making little carts and I made the little wooden cart and nailed the wheels on and stuff like that. And, but I didn't want anybody to push me, so I asked my mother for a sheet, uh -huh. and I put that up on it and did it that way. But actual land sailing, we bought our first one in the late 70s and went sailing at the Alvor Desert. A little man to single. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, what spurred you on to uh, well, start developing wings? After doing the... The Manta single for a while at the Alvor Desert, we heard that there was a regatta down at Ivanpah, and that was our first one, 1980, mm -hmm. that we went to, and that was my father. My father and I went down there in 1980 with our two Manta singles on top of a VW bus, and, uh, and then we, and it's a two-day drive coming back, so we kept talking with each other about ways to improve them, make them go better, and that kind of thing. And finally, when we saw Russ Foster and his wing, that just seemed like magic to me. Yes. And so I would practically drool on that yacht every time it came in and talk with Russ and try, went back and did a lot of study trying to figure out how the wing worked, a wing and flap combo. And that's what really got us going on designing and building wings and trial wings, and some of which worked and some didn't. And we so, finally got it down to a, a, a plan that works quite well. Yes. What was your first iteration of a wing? Was it just a uh, single wing with no flap, or did it, it have a, a flap? Single wing with. Uh, no flap, however, it was a wing that was in five sections, so um, you could uh, articulate it and put camber mm -hmm. in the wing. And what was that boat called? Uh, that was Skadoo. Skadoo, okay. And that was my father's boat, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he designed that and built that wing. Uh, and all of the skin parts were put on with a hand riveter. I don't know, my hand would never take that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but he had a theory that uh, as you sheeted out, you needed more camber, and as you sheeted in, it needed to go flat. Mm -hmm. And so he made all of that automatic, kind of over-engineered. So mm -hmm. As he would sheet the wing out, it would put camber in itself. As you sheet it in, it would flatten out, and as you sheet it out the other side, it would camber the other way. Until he found one point, the wing got stuck in a cambered position, and he could still sheet it in, cambered, and he said he just went through the fleet like mad. Wow. I was very surprised uh -huh. at, at that. So that got us thinking about wings and flaps. What was the uh, first wing with a flap that you guys had made? Uh, that was one called Zephyr. And it was a big steel yacht that um, had a double slotted flap because my studies showed that the double slotted flap would provide the most power for a wing and then, you know, obviously it's lift on an aircraft, so it would provide a great deal of lift with a double slot. Mm -hmm. And you see that all the time, double and triple slots actually, as planes come in to land, you look out and see holes through them. Mm -hmm. um, and we're using the same thing to power our yachts. And lo and behold, it worked extremely well. Uh, it had a lot of power for as heavy as it was. I mentioned to you the other day an 1,100 pound yeah, weight. Yeah, that's I amazing. It was a two-person yacht, mm -hmm. and I may have been thinking of two 200 pound people inside at the same time. So yeah. it may have been more like a, a six or 700 pound yacht, but it was very heavy. Yeah, that yacht, I actually got a ride in it with you, and that really influenced me to uh, want to experiment with wings as well. It's quite yeah. the ride. <laughs> yeah. So. It, it, 
And then from there, uh, I think you concentrated on building lighter and simpler, and then you went to just a one-flap type system? Yeah, I found the double, while the double-slotted flap does provide a whole lot of uh, low wind power, um, without being able to pull those flaps in, mm -hmm. uh, it provides drag at high speed. Yes. And so the single slotted flap still does, provides enough power to get it going and yet less drag at higher speeds. So uh, that's what we got into. And then we experimented flopping the flap from side to side and experimented with different size flaps. And then I thought about uh, reducing um, the, I guess the, the pressure point to, that causes the yacht to tip, so I, I expanded with a double wing, one wing on each okay, side. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I had just simple flaps on those, so it worked, but too much hassle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of moving parts there. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then um, your last wing um, was named after your dad, the Arthur A. Yep. And it was, pro I bet you your most successful wing. Um, it was oh, yeah. lighter at what 350 pounds something uh, like whole, that. Yeah, 375. And it was a class four, which means it had 50, 59 square feet of uh, wing area. Yeah. And I think you had actually a little less. I did. Yeah. <clears throat> and that one, you actually won the world championships out here at Smith Creek in uh, 2014 in class yeah. two thanks, against thanks boats to the with. Fact that Alan spun out. Oh hell! <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, and you were racing primarily against boats with twice the sail area in that well, that's, class. That's true, but they, they, they really couldn't keep up with our winged yachts no. or with Alan. Yeah. It just, it was no contest. It was really down to just a few boats at the top. So. Yeah. Phil, tell us about some of the uh, crazy things that have happened on some of your wing boats. Oh my gosh, there are many, 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 because we're learning how to run these wings, learning how to build them, learning how to balance them, and so it gets kind of kind of crazy just to start with. But probably one of the craziest ones was on a yacht that I had called the Zephyr, which was a two-seater yacht. Uh, with a uh, front cockpit, uh, and <clears throat> I had a, a 79 square foot wing up, so it was quite big. The mm. wing itself weighed 190 pounds, wow. that was heavy, and uh, we, I learned in running it, I did have a speedometer inside, and I learned in running it that I had it, uh, I designed it for the wing to be balanced so that I didn't have to have too much pressure on my controls. Uh -huh. And I hit that balance point pretty much exactly because I found when I got up over 70 miles an hour, uh, when I was, you know, if I would let go of my control wheel, normally at uh, normal speeds it would sheet out automatically. Right. But now if I let go of it, it would try to go the other way. And so, the pressure point had moved ahead of the um, pivot point on the wing 
and that caused all kinds of problems because the wing would get into an oscillation <laughs> yeah. mode and yeah. it was very dangerous. Yeah. Um, so I was at the Alvor Desert uh, and the, we had some ranch hands come up and uh, one of them said he'd like to take a ride with yeah. me and I said that'd be fine, you can do that. And his buddies were saying, okay, you, want to, you need to let us know now, you want to be buried with your boots on or off. <laughs> And they, we all had a good laugh. Oh, that's and, good. And I, we got in the yacht together and uh, headed off. And I was watching the speedometer because we were over 60 miles an hour, 65. And I said, okay, 70 is this point. I don't want to go over that. But we got caught in a gust of wind. And uh, suddenly it shot up over 70 miles an hour. And I was already in trouble. And I could feel the wing start to do its shaking. Oh, no. And uh, it began, began to get violent enough. I just told the guy, hang on, hang on. Well, what can he do? You know, his eyes were big as saucers. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> uh, the yacht started doing its dance where it would lift one wheel up and slam it down. Oh, man. And the other one and slam it down. And at one point it hit them both and popped up on the front wheel. And, and finally, I got this bucking bronco under control and stopped out there in the middle. We were a long ways from camp. Nobody was anywhere near us. So I got out to assess the damage. Uh, the control cables for the wing had broken, so I had no way to control from inside. Mm -hmm. The axle, which on that particular yacht was made out of an aluminum I-beam, uh, it was bent enough that yeah, with two of us in the yacht it was dragging um, and the Here. mast, the steel mast that went up inside my wing had popped out through the side of the wing. Mm -hmm. The wing was still standing oh but gosh. everything was damaged. Uh -huh. So I said, well, we got to get back to camp. If you can get inside and steer then I think I can stand on the axle and orient the <laughs> wing. And so I stood outside, and yes, we could get it going, but there was still too much weight back there because it was dragging right. as we were going. Right. And so he was the one who suggested, he said, how about I go up there and do a bareback? <laughs> And I said, what do you, you mean right up on the front? And he said, yeah. He says, I can lie down on the front of the fuselage there and I'll hold on to the axle, I mean on to the fork, and I can steer it up there. <laughs> uh, and so we didn't have anybody in the cockpit. I was riding on the axle, orienting the wing properly to get some, get some speed up, and he was lying down way up front. <laughs> steering us back to camp and oh, uh, we got up to a pretty good speed going back that way and uh, he told me later I just, he says he, he just was thinking oh my gosh we're really cruising what if this SOB falls off the back and he's out there hanging on going down so oh, that was one of the crazy times so oh, yeah and I know you've had several yeah, yourself, yeah. So, well uh, thanks again Phil that's a that's a good story to reminisce about. <laughs> yep, it was crazy. Okay. But we, we did make it back and had a lot of repairs to do. <laughs> yeah. In your opinion, uh, for racing, um, what are a few of the most important design aspects if, if one wanted to build a wing? Well, on the... On the wing itself, um, at this point, I think a single slotted flap is the way to go. Um, I, I like the 40% uh, flap mm -hmm. and 40% of the area. area. Yeah. Uh, and then this flap itself doesn't need to be very thick, but the the forward portion of it, the main wing, I think uh, you do fine with 20% or even 22, 23% mm -hmm. thickness on mm -hmm. those because that makes it really a, like a 12% thick wing if you consider the full area. Correct, uh, yeah. 
and then on the flap if you can do it at 12 percent thickness on the flap and still have the strength required you're in good shape and usually you can because the flap is flimsy lengthwise but you've got several points hinge points mm -hmm. that can provide strength there mm -hmm. so so, yeah. And then other than that, make it as light and as smooth as you can. Uh, and aerodynamically, Alan has shown us how important cutting drag is. So if you uh, cut the drag on your yacht, you'll be able to win races. Yeah, and have a nice uh, pumpkin seed type shape fuselage. Something like yeah. that. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Well, thanks for your time, Phil. Right. And... Uh, have a good week. All right. <laughs> Thanks, John. Bye.